My name is Donna Hare. I, during the 70s and 71, I worked in the Building 8 of NASA for a contractor, Philco Ford. Uh, they've changed their name several times, and uh, over the years, uh, I worked in the photo lab, I worked in different areas of the company, on and off site. During the 70s, uh, I don't know the exact date, but I walked into the photo lab, uh, one of the restricted areas. I do have a, uh, a uh, see, I did have a secret clearance, which I was not aware at the time there were clearances higher than I had, uh, because those clearances are supposed to be kept secret that you have them. So I didn't know. I thought I had the top clearance. I walked into a restricted area, which was not my company. Uh, it was the NASA Photo Lab, and there they they put. They developed the film from the moon and uh, satellite pictures, everything that's done by NASA. There was no technology. We were creating it as we went along. This day, that particular day, I walked into the photo lab in the restricted area, and this was between missions. Uh, one of the gentlemen I had been friends with, and I still talk to occasionally, uh, he pointed his my attention to one area of this mosaic. It was one panel of a mosaic, which are several several panels put together to form a larger picture. And these were either, I believe they were satellite pictures. I'm not sure. They were aerial, looking down. And I, I said, this is really interesting. He explained everything. And then he, with a smile on his face, he said, look over there. And I looked, and in one of the photo panels, uh, I saw a round white dot. And at the time, it was very crisp, very sharp lines on it. And I said to him, uh, what, what is that? Is that a dot on the emulsion? And then he's grinning, and he says, uh, dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And there was a round shadow at the right angle, at the correct angle, the sun shining on the trees. I saw pine trees. I didn't see a coastline. I don't know where this was. But um, I looked at him, and I was pretty startled because I'd worked out there several years and never seen anything like this, never heard of anything like this. And uh, I said, is this a UFO? And he's smiling at me, and he says, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that. What I knew he meant was it was, but he couldn't tell me. So I said, what are you going to do with this information? And he said, well, we always have to airbrush them out before we sell them to the public. And I was just amazed that they had a protocol in place for getting rid of UFO pictures. So as a precaution, they were put in quarantine for a little while. This particular man was in quarantine with them and was part of their debriefing. He said that a lot of them talked about their experience in seeing these craft follow them. I believe there was three on the moon when they landed. And, uh, and I think, that, and this is the best of my memory, that the code word was Santa Claus for these uh, uh, craft. And then some that wanted to talk were threatened. If they talk, they've signed papers not to talk. They had their retirements taken away. Um, I was just overwhelmed with that piece of information because I started asking questions. Uh, certain people that I would know were key people. In, in the organization. I'd take them away from the site. We'd go to lunch and I'd talk to them. And alone, they would tell me things and then swear if I ever said they said it, they would say I was lying. One gentleman that I knew very well was in quarantine with some of the astronauts. He said just about every one of them has seen things when they went to the moon that were, and in fact, one said that they were there. Craft were on the moon at that time. And this man has disappeared off the face of the earth. I've tried to find him, but I have his name. I've given to Dr. Greer. I'm sure he can find him. But um, a lot of the astronauts are told to keep it quiet. And they're good Americans, too. I mean, it's, it comes under the guise of national security. That's just something that I feel over the years uh, has been kept quiet. And how it's been kept quiet, I don't know. I have no idea. I've, I asked guards, security guards. I ran into another security guard that was forced to burn a lot of UFO pictures. And he told me, he came into my office one day. This was when I worked at another job. He came into my office and he was very frightened. And he said, Donna, I'm 
you know, I heard you were interested in this subject. He said, I used to work out there. And one day, some soldiers came in in the fatigues and had me burn pictures. And he said that he was burning them, and they were, he was forced not to look at them. But he was tempted. He looked at one of them, and it was a UFO on the ground. Shortly thereafter, he was hit in the head with a, bun, a gun, gun butt, and he still had a scar on his forehead from that being knocked out because he looked at the picture. Now, this gentleman was terrified. He was scared out of his mind. And he uh, also said that in the picture it was a UFO with little bumps on it. It looked like it had just landed. It's very hard to, to know this. But I, again, I have talked the people that know about it know about it and it's like a little underground. They'll come to me and talk to me in private. And they're afraid. Most of them are very afraid. And, and I guess I'm, I'm not afraid because I wasn't debriefed. There was a point in time I had some people come out and tell me I shouldn't talk about this. Uh, they didn't threaten to kill me, but I got the message I shouldn't talk about it. But I'd already talked about it so much it didn't really matter anymore to friends. And, and uh, uh, people either know it or they don't know it or they're, they're not sure. Um, and like I said in the congressional, informal congressional hearing, it, I really started feeling like this topic was about like sex. You know, everybody knew about it, but nobody talked about it in mixed company. And that it, you knew about it, you would, you would have like a friend. He was so terrified, he looked at me so frightened, like I'm going to tell her. And I wouldn't because, you know, she, he hasn't told her. It would probably put him in jeopardy at this time. And I'm waiting for that to come public whenever there's a congressional hearing where he'd be protected. And he may, he would be one of the ones that would probably not come willingly because he's very frightened. He was so scared that I was going to say something. And I have not. I don't want to hurt anyone. And I trust Dr. Greer. I feel he's done everything he said he would do as far as uh, protection, secrecy of what I give him for now. I want it to come out when it's necessary and proper and, and it can do something. I don't want people that are trying to go around cleaning up their mess and getting rid of these people or hurting them or, or challenging them or, or making them so frightened they move away like this one particular man I know of that has just disappeared off the face of the earth. He has disappeared. I just don't want that. You know, I don't, I don't want them to you know, a lot of people have asked me, well, what senators were at this congressional hearing? Which, which witnesses do you know and what are names, names? And I don't give that out in public. Greer has them locked up. Some of our, it was very critical that we do this perfectly. We had also simulations before the mission that uh, would generate what they expected the craft to do. The lights would, on the 10 by 20 foot screen in the control center, they would have these projected up there and a light would go off uh, going the pathway of the different, this is really one continual line, but it's done on different scales that we had to do. Uh, the light would continue on and if the light varied, which represented real-time information coming back from the spacecraft, one of the things that I'm upset about is that good people are forced to do illegal things and I believe that this information should be given to the American public. That's just something that I feel over the years uh, has been kept quiet.